Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here with Aaron Beard. And Aaron Beard is a Wildland Fire Paramedic. Wildland Fire Paramedic. Aaron just came to our five day Orcas Island retreat, and I'm just going to ask him some questions about what he thought about the seminar as somebody who does a very hardcore job for a living. What did you think about it, the five day seminar? I mean, the information was invaluable. It's certainly a fire hose of information. So it's a matter of like throwing a thousand things at the wall and hoping some, something sticks. So the way that we run the seminar is we do uh, orange choreographed staff fighting drills. We have mace yoga and we have heavy club swinging. You swing heavy clubs because it helps you with your job. What didn't you know about heavy club swinging that you learned at the seminar? There's about 30 ways to answer that question. Um, I got corrected in, in my form, so um, as I've heard before from some folks, um, we show up believing we kind of have an understanding of it, and then you get, you get with a coach, um, and they're going to point out int intricacies and nuance that you had no idea existed. Mine was pretty gross in the sense that I was doing an uh, inside heavy club circle to shield cast and doing an outside pullover. I didn't realize that, that, that mill prep was the inside circle to shield cast. So, so this, for the last year, I have not been doing inside circle to pull over. I've been doing mill prep. Okay, so, that was so interesting. mill and mill prep are two different things that go past different ears. Normally, uh, something like mill and reverse mill is for anybody who works for a living, anybody who works with tools, anybody. It's for anybody. doesn't matter your age group, doesn't matter your sport. Mills and reverse mills help everybody get better shoulder health. It gets rid of back pain. It gets rid of all kinds of stuff. It is a little bit interesting because people do not always do them the right way, but people don't know what they don't know. That is the whole point of coming to seminars is that somebody will look at everything that you're doing and help you figure out what you don't know so you can figure out how to do it better. What did you think of the staff component of uh, the workshop? The staff was a blast. Um, and it was, it was really intelligently programmed in a wave format, um, if you're familiar with that concept. So we get ramped up with staff, it's lightweight, but it's, it's technique driven and flow state driven to a degree. Um, that would kind of amp us up and then they'd bring us back down again with some stretching and then some, some compensatory stuff to keep us going. They move into some heavy work. With, it's all the same family of movements, so we're playing with that same and or similar family. Um, so that programming was fantastic. The staff stuff was money. Some of the forest training, not some, all of the forest training was the energy in the group. Not to get too esoteric, but you can imagine, you'll see the footage. It was ridiculous. And people were, people were gassed out and tired, got into the forest with these giant trees and moss and really angry wasps um, and started swinging staffs at each other. And the, the fatigue just went away. And everyone, you, you don't realize how much you have left um, until you end up in an environment like that. And it actually op opens up your work capacity overall. This was a really fun seminar. We like to do these seminars in a bunch of different environments, mostly because I like to teach staff in a bunch of weird places, like on the sides of mountains. We do do it in the studio sometime, but I like to do it in warehouses and parking lots. And on Orcas Island, we got to do it like in the forest on the side of the mountain. And what everybody figures out is that walking off trail is a lot harder than people think it is. So every time we change the environment, we go back to the basic learning technique over again and we repeat the learning pattern. Because anytime you change environments for something like that, people really do, they can't connect it anymore. And so anytime you change environments, you redo the training. But people have to learn how to walk in all these different ways. Everybody thinks they know how to walk until you ask them to walk uh, off trail through the forest while somebody's swinging a stick at their face at full power. Could you describe what you learned in the staff training? Because you have previous martial arts experience. Yeah, I do have previous experience in martial arts uh, through Kempo. We didn't do any kind of staff training. It was all defensive stuff relative to weapons, um, at least where I, was, where I was learning. So what I learned with the staff training was just about everything that I was shown at the, at the seminar, I guess. Primarily, I learned that I was able to, uh, I was able to do it. Um, and with the system that they used to teach us, A, we stayed safe, no one, no one got injured. So that's kind of huge when you got a, a lot of folks who have never swung long, hard sticks at each other's faces for five days while they're getting exhausted. No one got, no one got injured, so that was fantastic. 
But I learned I could actually do it by day two or three without any formal technique, relative, technique, rel training relative to technique. Um, based on like where your hands really need to be doing the flippity dippity cool stuff that you see in kung fu movies, absolutely unnecessary to actually to be dangerous with the staff and be able to block dangerous blows incoming. So that was fantastic to actually figure that out in a couple of days. The staff idea is always fun to see because we get people from a bunch of different backgrounds, a bunch of different types of hardcore environments. We get stunt guys, we get firefighters, we get military guys show up. And the way that we organize the information is designed to force people to make a bunch of decisions. And then we stack that with the mace and the club because all the movement patterns are the same. They're the, I think that they're the most important movement patterns that humans do. And when you shove them like out in the forest, people love it. It is what the human brain is designed to do. The human brain is a supercomputer that's designed to take snapshots of the world around you and find you a path of walking while people are trying to hit you in the face and your brain is doing all this crazy stuff and the more extreme the environment usually the harder you push the brain in that zone people tell you that it's not possible to do this it's not possible to teach it but we can definitely teach it it is what the human brain is designed to do it is a supercomputer and it is designed to calculate distance speed and timing originally to keep you alive. The oldest sport in history is keeping yourself alive. And the original environments were forested environments for the most part. It wasn't really cities first. It was out there first. It does crazy things to people's brains. And I just like to observe what happens to people over the course of the seminar. I just, so just segue what you're talking about, just one view through the lens of evolutionary biology, which is the lens I like to look at things through often. I find it very useful. Um, what he's talking about bringing this into the forest um, and what the human brain is designed to do, how our shoulders articulate relative to this family of movements. Um, we evolved to do that stuff. Now we're on flat ground, in chairs, in offices. That's not natural, normal. We're not wired for it. Evolutionarily, we have not caught up to that. So imbalance, pain, compensatory patterns, all that kind of unfun stuff. So that there's, there's almost a sense of, we're on unlevel ground with unfamiliar territory in the short term long-term looks viewed through that evolutionary biological lens we're going back home to the place that um, we evolved to actually train in like this shoulder articulates in a way that in all our joints and our structure is designed in a way to function on unlevel ground under load all that's gone away in the last since the post-industrial revolution we're kind of bringing that all back home again where it came from over time, we like to add other things into the staff training. So you usually start with, you know, your basic attack defend drills. You move to one-to-one -to -one drills. If somebody tries to hit you, you try to hit them back. You learn to defend. You learn to move on unlevel ground. And then eventually we put the backpacks back into this so that you're actually carrying load while you're doing this. And then we like to fill the backpacks with the things that people might find useful for all of human history. We have a whole list of stuff that we put in people's backpacks when they do this training. And we're gonna, you'll probably come back to one of these again, and we're gonna get you in the backpack and have you do all the fun stuff. Uh, it gets more and more fun over time. You can never run into the end of staff drills ever because you can always change the environment and you can always change the conditions to run the experiments in. There is no cardio like staff cardio. Like everything else that you do, is kind of like gets you kind of gets your heart rate high but staff is unpredictable so somebody else is deciding when you move and then that changes your breathing pattern every step is different the height of steps is different how fast you move is different i love teaching it i hope you enjoyed uh, actually doing the seminar because it was pretty fun it was and certainly tell them about the food so yeah, I mean, so the food at the at the workshop was fantastic. Um, I knew it was going to be catered. I'd actually been to Dove before, about 22 years ago, um, back when it was a, um, the small hippie sauna and maybe a shack. It's a little more than that now. But the, um, there, was, there was a chef that uh, catered the event. That was just there was, was a couple, chef and sous chef, and it was it was the food was bomber. It was fantastic. Um, everyone's tail was wagging every time we sat down at the table. Getting good food for something like this is a very crucial to keeping people going because these are extraordinarily long training days. There are four training cycles in the morning, four training cycles in the afternoon after lunch. So good quality food is essential. Uh, if you come to the LA workshops, it's mostly just like grilled meat 
and some vegetables. This one's much more fancy. This one had just absolutely incredible food. Um, the Thailand seminar also has absolutely incredible food. But keeping people fueled is essential because it is a lot. We start early, we train super hard, and then we're not done until nearly 6, 6.30 every night. So you start at 8.30, you're done at 6, 6.30, depending on how long the last drills run until people get through it. And then people just get to eat a ton of food at the end of the day, which is kind of a very fun thing to do. Thank you so much for coming out to the seminar. It was fun to have you. We're going to have to have you come back to a couple of other seminars. It's always good to have to. somebody with a way more medical on something like this because it's always good as we get into further and further more extreme environments with these seminars. Having somebody who knows, what do you call it, austere medicine is key because these seminars are going to end up further and further and further from civilization over time. Oh, and just planning to see if, if there would be any interest in a combination of the movement that he's teaching and possibly getting some kind of certification um, in the EMS austere environment as something that, uh, that there's, there's a possibility in the future that may come. I'm definitely going to get into that idea because the idea of uh, combining austere environment medical training with staff training, I mean, why wouldn't you want to take it's that class? Fun I want to take that class. That class sounds awesome. We all need more medical training. You simply cannot have enough. And getting a good coach to give you good medical training in the environment that you want to be in is like half the battle.